All right, so have you ever had one of those days? Like, you've got it all planned out, everything's perfect, and then wham, the rain hits. Right, well, yeah. Totally throws a wrench in things, right? For sure. Okay. But uh, what if there was a way, and I think there is, to kind of flip that script? Mm -hmm. I mean, what if you could actually find some joy in that unexpected rain? And that's what we're going to dig into today, this idea of mindfulness. I love it. So before you start picturing, like, you know, meditating on a mountaintop. Right. Mindfulness isn't about forcing yourself to be happy all the time. Yeah. You know, it's not about pretending everything's perfect. It's really more about learning to just like hit the pause button for a sec on those gut reactions we all have. Yeah. Just notice what's going on without instantly labeling it good or bad, you know? Right. Yeah, it's yeah. like in that excerpt we were talking about, right? Like watching a movie. I mean, you don't have to love every single scene, every plot twist to enjoy the whole film. Exactly. And mindfulness is kind of about bringing that same open, curious mind to, well, everything. Yeah. Like, oh, there's a rain delay, okay. Traffic jam, yep, that's happening too. Yeah. It's not about wishing things were different, just being present with what is. And what's so interesting is how that shift, you know, going from judgment to observation, it yeah. can actually have these really powerful effects on the brain. Really? Oh yeah. See, we are wired for survival, right? So our brains, they're constantly trying to categorize everything, good, bad, safe, dangerous. Right. But all that labeling, it creates a ton of, well, unnecessary stress and anxiety. It does. And we end up missing out on moments of joy because we're so busy freaking out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And mindfulness, it kind of offers this off-ramp from that. Okay. I like that. An off-ramp. Like through meditation and stuff, we can actually train our brains to be more aware of those automatic thoughts and then choose a different response. So you can actually change how our brains are wired. Exactly. It's called neuroplasticity. The brain can adapt and rewire itself. It's pretty amazing. It really is. And so this rewiring, does it lead to noticeable changes? Oh, absolutely. Remember Sarah from the article? She used to let the tiniest things ruin her day. Right, right. Learning to observe those emotions without letting them control her. She basically found a new level of contentment and even, you know, fun. Wow, that's incredible. It's a great example of emotional regulation, which is a huge part of mindfulness. It's not about suppressing your emotions, though. It's more about awareness. Okay, so how do we get better at that? Think of it like this. You're not going to stop waves from crashing on the shore, right? But you can learn to surf. Oh, I like that analogy. <laughs> okay, so how do we start riding those waves, so to speak? Well, it's a journey, not a destination. Right. There are tons of ways to bring mindfulness into your life. You could try breathing exercises, mindful walking, even just really paying attention to the taste of your food. It's about finding what works for you. Exactly. Just make it a regular practice, whatever it is. So next time you hit a snag big or small try, mm -hmm. hitting that pause button before reacting. Could be anything. Even that rain shower we talked about. Instead of going straight to, ugh, this is so inconvenient, just take a sec to really observe it. Yeah. What do you notice? How does it make you feel? That's where the magic happens. As you practice that non-judgmental awareness, you start to discover this richness, this depth to your experiences that you might have missed before. Interesting. And that, my friend, is worth exploring.